Welcome to another edition of Inside Outlook. I'm Tony Trongone, Superintendent of Pemberton Township Schools. And for this episode, we're going to focus on uh, facilities management, uh, mostly uh, school buildings, and all the improvements that I'm excited to bring forward to you today. And as you walk the halls and the grounds of our schools in Pemberton Township, I hope you're going to be as excited as I am. That being said, I want to note that facilities management and its effect on the school environment in which our students learn and play are just as important as the curriculum they are asked to learn. Effective facility management systems determine environmental quality in schools. The quality of the school environment shapes the attitudes of the students, teachers, and staff. Those attitudes affect teaching and learning behavior. That behavior affects performances, and then the educational performance determines future outcomes of individuals and society as a whole. So, some improvements we've made. I'll start off with our biggest project, which was at the Stackhouse School on Trenton Road. It has new heating and air conditioning throughout the building. It has new lighting, and it is quite a difference in regards to how bright the classroom and the hallways are now. Also new windows, and also a new fire alarm system. Throughout the K-5 to environment, we know that our early childhood center is climate controlled, and also Fort Dix Elementary School is climate controlled. Last year, we renovated Emmons School, so that has both the heating and air conditioning. And then we, we put a focus on Harker Wiley, Bazanski, and Dembo, where all the classrooms would be air conditioned uh, for this year and moving forward. Also at the elementary level, uh, we have smart boards in all the classrooms, but through time they get old and we're replacing them uh, with interactive televisions that are more, we we're finding is more resilient than smart boards and projectors because it's so critical that uh, these devices work every day for our students and we're learning that having that interactive television is going to be more resilient, providing a more stable learning environment for our teachers and for our students. Uh, we already have iPads for every grade three to five student, and so they all have their own personal learning device. We don't take them home, but they do. each room has a set of iPads for each student, and we're going to extend that to grades K to two to where each kindergarten, first, and second grade student will have their own personal learning device, uh, and we're excited about that also. Now, moving to the middle school level, we have some exciting things going on. We renovated the gym floor at Newcomb, the track at Helen Fort Middle School, and also we've, uh, we've put in two STEAM labs at the middle school. And STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, the Arts, and Mathematics. And we're providing our students the latest cutting edge technology in learning, such as 3D printers and other technologies that afford our students a 21st century learning experience. And now moving forward to the high school level. Each of our students will be provided with their own personal learning device, a Chromebook. Uh, we're also, as mentioned earlier, providing interactive televisions in replacing the outgoing smart boards. But also what was really important that we learned last year, we have to have a stable uh, wireless network for our students to learn in. The previous system wasn't as robust as what we had to put in now because we have so many users on the network at one time on the wireless network. So we've made sure that we pro provided that stability so our students and teachers are not going to get kicked off the network because there's too many people on, on the network at one time. So we're really pleased on the progress we've made with our, with our network and, and our students being able to access that network very easily. Continuing with improvements at the high school, we're making sure all our lighting is, is at full capacity. Also, various rooms and hallways have been painted, and we're also replacing ceiling tiles, and then all exterior doors have been painted. Our locker room facilities were in disrepair, so we've had to make some, some changes to the facilities in the locker room, starting with the bathrooms. Uh, the bathrooms have new toilets, uh, flooring, and lighting, and then the showers in the locker rooms have new plumbing and fixtures, new flooring, and also new lighting. And we're also going to put new flooring in the locker room area uh, where the kids get dressed uh, and provide a better environment for hygiene and not just on the, on the cement but on a rubberized uh, floor. Moving toward the visual and performing arts, the stage flooring was renovated 
And also of note, part of the stage has a performance floor installed. And then the auditorium lobby. Our parents and our, and our community come and visit our school. We're making sure that that is bright, brightly lit, clean, painted. So you're gonna see new lighting, new paint, and new ceiling tiles. Windows are all clean as they should be. But again, when the community comes to visit our school, they're looking at first class uh, facilities. And some improvements outside of the high school, the soccer field. So uh, we've had some issues with the soccer field, so it's been leveled. We put irrigation and also sod. We're excited about playing our first game on the field. And then also we're looking forward in the fall to renovating our, our softball and baseball fields and dugouts. As you can see, we've been very busy in facilities management throughout the district this summer. It is my hope that you will agree that the information that's been provided to you today focuses on kids. Primarily the saying is, kids first. But also, as I mentioned earlier in the program, the quality of the school environment has a profound impact on student outcomes. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you throughout the school year.